it made more financial sense actually for me to walk away from everything than it did to do the alternative in that situation. You're listening to Financial Grown Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown Up. And you know what? Being a grown up is really hard, especially when it comes to money. But it's okay. We're going to get there together. I'm going to bring you one money story from a financial grown up, one lesson, and then my take on how you can make it your own. We got this. Hey friends, before we get into today's money story, which is a good one, I just want to take a moment to thank so many of you that have been subscribing and writing reviews and just writing to me and giving me your feedback. If you have time, please support the podcast by sharing with a friend and helping to get more people involved. I know you guys are super busy. If you have time, reviews on iTunes are the best. And of course, be in touch through social media. I am at Bobby Rebel on Twitter and at Bobby Rebel one on Instagram. Okay, now the show. At first, I thought this episode was going to be about splitting up, about letting go of people. But then I realized we're actually talking about letting go of stuff and the emotions tied to stuff. When relationships end, it can be messy. And with all the emotions going on, in many cases, actual logistics need to get done. Like someone needs to actually move out and then the stuff has to be divided. It's really a mess. Our natural instinct is to fight for what's ours or to just walk away. Fight or flight, something like that. I don't know. So listen closely, my friends, to what my guest has to say. If you are a fan of Money Podcasts, you already know her. Certified financial planner Shauna Compton Game is the host of Millennial Money, one of my favorite podcasts. And of course, I am so grateful that I was privileged to be a guest when my book was released. This is a great story. Here is Shauna Compton Game. Shauna Compton Game, you are a financial grown up and someone I am learning so much from. Welcome to the program. Ah, I'm so excited to be here. And congratulations, Millennial Money, one of my favorite podcasts, has reached the three year mark. I see it frequently in the top 100 charts. What's going on with the show? Yeah, the show is just, it keeps growing and growing. And it's so exciting that, you know, more and more people, I think, are getting really passionate and enthusiastic about taking ownership over their finances. And it just, it baffles me that, you know, people around the world are that excited about, you know, learning about money, but it's so exciting that they are. And one of the things that I love about the show is you've branched out beyond the sort of standard topics. You even do a lot of shows on things like travel, speaking of global. Absolutely. You know, I feel that money is such a tough subject to talk about anyway. People are looking for a more well-rounded a view of money, of thinking about their life. And so, yeah, we try to touch on travel and we try to touch on other, um, you know, stories of whether it's Michelin star chefs or authors or musicians or entrepreneurs, people that are just sharing their stories, sharing their journey. And also I think it helps you know, connect the audience and show that we're all more alike, regardless of income, than we are different. And it's also about getting very real, which brings us to the money story that you're going to share. You walked away from all your assets. That just blows my mind. Tell your story and then we'll, we'll explain what happened. Yeah. So, you know, I was early in my thirties and had to make a, you know, very strong life choice and decided that walking away from my assets from a relationship and a you know situation I was in was worth the downside. And that's very hard being a certified financial planner because I'm used to, you know, giving people money advice and telling them how to grow their wealth. And it was a very, you know, weird situation to be in where I was looking at alternatives and it made more financial sense actually for me to walk away from everything than it did to, you know, do the alternative in that situation. And so, you know, I think what's cool about sharing that story, initially it was hard for me, but I think sharing that story shows people that, you know, life is not all upside, you know, there's a lot of downside and sometimes you have to make tough choices like that, but life goes on and, and it's all going to be okay. And the truth is when you have something like that, that's so cataclysmic, the reality is if you're strong, you can always earn money. 
you need your freedom and the freedom. It's so cliche to say this, but your freedom really is priceless. You can always go back out and earn money. That's why I tell people, and I was divorced at 30 and happily remarried, but I tell people, you can always go out and earn more money. Don't spend years of your life being angry, being in a divorce battle with somebody that you're never going to resolve things with financially. Everyone always gets, everyone gets the short end of the stick financially in a divorce. That's just the way the math is. So extract yourself from the situation and focus on your strengths and the fact that you can rebuild your life. I and mean, you did that. Yes. And I mean, it's very cliche to say, but things are really just things. And I don't think there's any better way to learn that lesson than to literally give up all of your things and realize that they don't have any power over your life. They don't have power over your happiness. And yeah, you can make more money. You can reinvent yourself. You can pull yourself up from, you know, from virtually nothing. I mean, I I felt like I had just, you know, walked out of college again and was, you know, starting from scratch. But really through that experience, it gave me time to think about, who I really am, you know, what is my path? What are my talents? What are my strengths? You know, and what do I want my life to look like? And through those hard times and those hard decisions, I think, you know, I was really able to shape the career and the direction that I have now. So what is the lesson for our listeners? What I've learned personally and what I've learned through working with so many different people with their finances is that money really is a tool. It's a tool to give you options in life, you know, and having options is a good thing. So, you know, maybe turning negativity about budgeting or about saving money, turning that into a positive and really seeing that, you know, managing your money and being smart with your money is really a tool for you to be able to achieve all of those really cool things that you want to do in life. While I have you here, let's just do one personal finance tip, one money tip that you and your husband use in your daily lives that people can really put to work immediately. Absolutely. So whether you make $30,000 or whether you make $30 million, the most impactful thing you can do for your finances, and it sounds so basic and yet it will revolutionize your goals, it will revolutionize your future is something I call knowing your numbers. It's really the process of figuring out where the cash is going that you've got. And when you can find patterns and when you can redirect uh, spending that you're already you know, spending your money on, then you can put it towards debt payoff. You can put it towards buying that house. You can put it towards all of those amazing goals that you have. The information gives you the power to make the decision, whatever that decision is. Absolutely. And you have two choices. You can either keep spending the money the way you're spending it, or you can make a different choice and, you know, put some sort of boundary around that spending and then redirect that cash towards something else. So it really gives you ownership. I call it like empowering your bank account. You know, you're really the CEO of your finances. And I think if you put that hat on, it's really going to help you look at managing your money in a whole different way. All right, we're all going to put our CEO of the household hats on. I feel like that's calling for some kind of uh, logo wear. <laughs> household <laughs> CEO, right? All right, thank you so much, Shauna Compton Game, certified financial planner and host of Millennial Money. You're the best. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, friends, here's my take, and some of it may surprise you. Financial grown up tip number one. I'm going to disagree in a tiny way with Shauna. Well, maybe not that tiny, only because not everyone is in her position. Not everyone is a certified financial planner. Not everyone can support themselves the way that she can immediately, although we should all work towards that. Don't necessarily jump the gun in giving up the big stuff when it comes to splitting up especially if you're coming off a long-term relationship where maybe one spouse took a backseat career-wise to the other for the better of the couple, but now that person is left in a vulnerable position. Even though Shauna is happy with her decision, when it comes to major assets from a relationship and maybe things like spousal support or child support in a breakup, you need to take it seriously. Be as direct and efficient as much as possible Don't spend your life in court, but if you or your kids are going to need an asset or support now and in the future, and you are entitled, make sure you and your lawyer do fight for what you deserve. Financial grown-up tip number two, divorce is going to wreck you, destroy you emotionally. That's a given. In fact, that's true of 
many relationship breakups, but you can't get caught up obsessing about the little stuff, especially when it comes to just wanting to prove a point or get back at somebody. When you can, try to detach and kind of see the silliness in all of it. True story. As some of you know, I had a brief marriage in my 20s. We were literally splitting up wedding gifts. I mean, who gets the china, who gets the silver, stuff that was literally, I kid you not, still wrapped up in the original gift wrap from the store. So anyway, among the things that my ex demanded was the food, drinks, and cleaning supplies that we had in our tiny one-bedroom New York City apartment. A little weird, but okay, I gave it to him. So anyway, about a week later, these giant boxes arrived from Costco. They were a gift from my mom's friend, Martha, who, by the way, has a side hustle as a comedian. (laughs) The boxes were filled with giant tubs of cleaning supplies and condiments. We're talking everything from Windex, laundry detergent, ketchup, mustard, mayo, you can imagine, a year supply. Not only did it help me smile for the first time in what seemed like forever, It also did save me from having to buy that stuff for like a year. So thank you, Martha. All right. Thanks to all of you for listening to this episode. I hope you got a lot of value from Shauna's story. I adore her and always listen to Millennial Money and hope you will too. Go to my website, bobbyrebell.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm going to be sending it out a little bit more regularly at many people's requests to keep you more informed about what is going on with the podcast. And also, of course, please follow me on Twitter at Bobby Rebel and on Instagram at Bobby Rebel One. And let me know what you think of the show. Reviews, as I mentioned before, always truly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this episode with my friend Shauna and that we all got one step closer to being financial grownups. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.